After a two-year hiatus, the 10th anniversary edition of Ake Arts and Books Festival will take place physically on 24 to 26 November 2022. The festival will be held in Ekoyi, Lagos, where 100 authors, poets, artists, storytellers, dancers, actors, musicians, and thinkers from all over the African continent and beyond will converge for three days of cultural immersion. Joining us on the show this morning as we discuss this year's Ake Arts and Books Festival is Lola Shone, author of award-winning novel The Secret Lives of Baba Segi's Wives, founder of Widow Books and director Ake Arts and Books Festival. Lola Shone, welcome to The Morning Show. Good to have you here. Thank you so well, much. Okay, quickly. Congratulations. It's been 10 years uh, since you started this and a lot has happened within this piece of uh, uh, 10 years, and now you have the 10th anniversary. Now tell us about this 10th anniversary, tell us about the journey so far, and tell us why you have chosen Lagos now as the venue of this year's festival, because previously, earlier in the year, the plan was uh, to host the event in Abeokuta, and the theme then was homecoming. Now you've brought it to Lagos. Take us through all of that. Thank you so much. Um, so it's been an incredible journey, um, making reading and books desirable, attractive has been like a dream come true for me. And um, I think with a lot of the work that I do, the idea is always to show what's possible and to do everything that I can to show the generations coming behind me um, that we can raise the bar and we can operate with very, very high standards. The idea from the beginning was to set up a world-class festival, and I think we really have achieved that. We're extremely excited to have got to this point where it's the 10th year anniversary. We've succeeded in bringing over a thousand uh, writers uh, thinkers, artists, dancers, filmmakers um, to Ake Festival, Ake Festival over the last 10 years. And this particular edition is very exciting. Um, we're going to have our very stimulating panel discussions. We have some wonderful, wonderful uh, book chats um, with different authors. We're extremely honored to have joining us this year um, Professor Abdurazak Gurna, who won the Nobel Prize for Literature last year. We are also going to have Veronique Tajo as the headliner, as well as lots and lots of authors that we, I guess, over the two decades have come to know and love. So Zuki Zwavana, we've got Jennifer Makumbi, Ned Yokurafo, Tendai Huchu. It's been about bringing um, African creatives together, creating a beautiful um, hub, creative hub where they can network. So I don't think we've done badly at all. And yes, we did want to go to Abel Kuta this year. That was the dream. That was what we'd hoped would happen. Um, but we also have a lot of things to consider. We've got to consider safety, security. And of course, you can see my, my gray hairs. Um, convenience is very important <laughs> as well. Um, so it just seemed like um, the easier option. So we kind of changed our minds about five weeks ago. Um, Home is not just Abel Kuta, although it's significant for us at the Ake Festival that we go I mean, go to Abelkuta, where it all started, but home is also Nigeria. Home for many is also African soil. So it's, it's really exciting that we're going to have all these activities. Rufai? We have Rufai in the all right. studio. Uh, great one. And, and and congratulations once again, as always. I mean, because I've been a firm follower of the Ake uh, Festival and all of that. I mean, it's just great. And having a Nobel Red coming, I miss all of the great authors. Uh, year on year, you keep pushing the envelope. I know it's not easy, you know, putting together this festival. A lot of blood, sweat, and tears for you. What drives you to continue, despite the fact that the literary world is not well supported in Nigeria? What drives you? I, I'd like to know that can-do spirit that keeps you going on. So there are a number of things. Um, when I was a younger author, especially after The Secret Lives of Baba Segi um, came out, I did a lot of traveling, a lot of touring in Europe, in the US. And there were several times where I would be 
asked a certain type of question which seemed to demand that I say derisory things about um, elements of my culture. And although it was important, it's always important, I think, for a, for a writer to be very clear um, about, you know, what, where they stand on issues, I didn't always feel comfortable having those conversations in what was almost, you know, always a sea of, of white faces. And I realized that there was a lot of value um, to be able to say these things that, you know, we, we need these things that need to be said, but in front of African audiences and before um, um, audiences where the people that you're looking at look like you, but where you also do not need to provide context. You know, you can say things to them dead on and they get it. And over the years, I have seen also that the truth is there's no audience like the home audience. There's no sort of love you can get anywhere in the world that's like the love that you get as an African author on African soil. But beyond that, as I said earlier, it's just so important um, that in situations where um, politicians you know, many of them in this country have failed us. And there is that quest, I think, for a lot of young people to, to look for maybe people to emulate. So I'm not, <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination, presenting myself as a kind of role model. But the idea is to continue to show what's possible, to show that we can do great things in an excellent way, in a, in a way that anybody over the world, anywhere in the world, will look at that and say, that's a fantastic product. So that has been driving me. I'm also very concerned about, you know, making sure that we, we pay homage to the generations before us, those who charted the path and who have made this road easier, as well as celebrating the new and emerging voices. So I think that's the, those elements are the main driving forces for me. Thank you, Rufai. Okay, two quick things. The first is that this is not just about the Ake Book and Arts Festival this year. You are also hosting the second conference of the uh, Conference of uh, African Literary Festivals, the Global Conference yes. of African Literary Festivals Associations. Yes. Tell us a little about that. And then secondly, the support that you were talking about. One of the advantages that the AK Arts and Book Festival has had is the fact that you have multiple supporters. At the time, it was the Ogun State Government and the Sterling Bank. And we all know that this support, you know, that uh, corporate bodies and state governments offer help to keep the thing going. Absolutely. When they withdraw, look at uh, the Garden City Literary Festival. Once there was a change of government in River State, uh, that began to have a, a problem. So what level of support are you still getting? Is the Ogun State Government still supporting you? Or another state government has taken over? Is Sterling Bank still on board? Those two quick issues. Thank you so much. So, um, first of all, uh, the way it started and the, the way that it came to be that we are, AK Festival is hosting um, the second conference of the Global Association of Literary Festivals is that I attended as the only African festival the first conference in 2020 in Dubai. And there are about 40 of us present. Um, many more, of course, have joined since then. And when we'd finished, you know, all the different uh, conversations that we were there for. Um, they asked who wanted to host the second um, conference. And I think it's, I don't know, maybe my African spirit that was pushing me, or the village people, I don't know. But somehow I put my hand up <laughs> and I said, I, you know, Ake Festival will we'll do it. Um, and apparently a lot of people put their hands down when they saw that we offered a lot of the um, festival directors from South America was saying, oh, yes, any opportunity to go to the motherland. And I hadn't realized how important um, that was to many of them. And so it was like, yes, you know, it's all gung-ho. Let's, you know, make it happen. And it's been a very, very, very difficult journey. And it has taken every bit of um, strength and resolve to not call them and just say, you know, we're not going to be able to handle this. As I sit here today, I can tell you that although I had um, a meeting with um, um, the, pres the chief of staff to the president about about three weeks ago, I first started this conversation um, in May. And 
um, it, nothing much has, has come of it. So between borrowing money from my bank again and even borrowing from my, my own children, this is how um, we've been able to pull this together. But I'm still hoping um, that the federal government will hopefully step in and support this very important venture. Um, we have been very lucky with sponsorship. Um, in terms of state sponsorship, it's always been minimal. But I have a, a habit of, um, of, of showing gratitude, which is when people give us, even if it's a small amount, I always make it look like it's a lot more than it is as a way of honoring the, the gesture. And I can tell you that um, over the years, it's been you know different funders, but the one organization and the one company that has been consistent every year for the last six years has been Sterling Bank. They have stood behind this project, they have helped to promote this project, um, and they have just been there. Both Abubakar um, Suleiman and Yemi Odubi, um, who run the bank, have always been there to support, even within a, a personal capacity, because this is important for them as well. They're both readers. They both love and respect and see the importance and the significance of the arts in the lives of Nigerians and Africans. And of course, it's also about education, which is one of the key areas that they're interested in. Well, unfortunately, we don't have so much more time, uh, but it's a great pleasure having you on the morning show. Thank you. Thank you very much, and we wish you all the best with the Arcade Books and Arts Festival. Thank you so much.